Law Every Day with JJK. Hi everyone, welcome back to my studio. My name is Jared again, but please feel free to call me JJK. So today's Tuesday. It's week two. Yesterday we talked about body language, how to communicate body language through how a character is standing. Today we're going to be talking about how to communicate through comics. Today I'm going to be focusing on specifically how you communicate through the symbols that we use as graphic novelists and cartoonists. So let me get the overhead shot here. Now I'm going to draw these two very simple sock puppets to help illustrate what I want to teach you. One sock puppet has stripes, one does not, and that's how we can tell the two apart. Now I'm going to be using the word word so as not to sway you with how you might feel. I'm using the word word as just a generic word. But telling a story through comics, it's all about these symbols, these visual symbols. So what did I just communicate to you with that visual symbol. I communicated that this character, the character, the stripes, is talking. This is a word balloon. All right, now what did I communicate here? I communicated that this character, the sock without stripes, is thinking to themselves. So here's a question for you. Can this character hear that word? The answer is yes. This character can hear that word. Can this character hear that word? No, this character cannot hear this word because this character was thinking. Now, we know that this word is being spoken by this character because of that little stem. We know that this word is being thought by this character because those little bubbles point down to the character's head. Because I could also have a word bubble up here, but if the stem is pointing down to this character, we now know that this is the character that's speaking that. So it's nothing to do with the word balloons or thought bubbles being above the character's head and everything to do with where that stem is pointing. Now, I can also control volume through the visuals because we're all speaking at different volumes throughout the day. So let me draw this character with the stripes, the sock puppet with the stripes. Now, at what volume is that character speaking? Loudly, really, really loudly, word! And, and how do we, how did I do that? So you saw that and you instinctively knew that this character was speaking loudly. But how did I do that? A couple of things. One, I used all capitals. I used an exclamation point. The word is physically big. But also, there isn't a lot of blank space between the letters and the border. Here, here, and here. You see that comfortable amount of white space I left between the letters and the border? I didn't hear. So it seems like that character is speaking so loudly that eventually that, that, that those letters are going to burst out of that bubble and just be so loud. Now, at what volume is that character speaking? 
the character speaking very quietly. And it's not just that I wrote the word to be small, but look at all of that blank space. All of that blank space around there makes that word feel quieter. Because here, check this out. I could write the word even smaller. But if I don't draw a big old word balloon, it's not going to read as quiet. Watch what happens when I draw a regular size word balloon that's as small as the word. These have very different meanings. This reads as quiet. This reads as, speaking, as somebody speaking at a regular volume. They're just really far away. Maybe they're down the street. Now, there's also emotion behind their words. So I'm not going to draw the characters. I'm going to draw the word balloons first because I feel like their facial expressions are going to really give this away. But if I present the word balloon to look like this, in what tone is that character speaking? How is that character feeling but angry? And you knew that before I even drew this character. Because when we're angry, our, our, we're not always in control of the words that we're using. We, we're not always going to choose the words that we would if we were happy. And when you're really angry, sometimes those words will hurt people. And now it feels like if you could reach in and touch this, you might hurt yourself. Now what if... What if I drew the stem to be all wavy like so? Could mean a few things. It could mean that the character's sad. Could mean that the character's tired. It could mean maybe the character's been beat up or isn't feeling so well, there's a thermometer in their mouth, maybe an ice pack on their head. But you can hear the tone waver. So here, read it with me now. Word. 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 You see what I did there with the visual? Hopefully, at some point in your story, your character might feel this way. Love. That character is just in love. And what are they in love with? What are we all in love with? Cupcakes. Let's switch gears just a little bit. This is a bit of a trick question. What if my stem is a lightning bolt? It has nothing to do with an emotion and has nothing to do with volume. But what is making that sound? And the answer that what is something electronic. So it could be that my character is speaking on a phone. And the sounds that are emitting from that electronic device will have a lightning bolt. Even if on the other side, that creature is a sentient being, being that it's a living creature. So the character is watching TV somewhere in front of a camera there is a living, breathing sock puppet filming that, but we are hearing that noise being transmitted over something electronic. It could be that your character is in and of itself electronic. So if your character is a robot, anytime that character talks, you would have 
a lightning bolt. Now that especially comes in handy when you are writing stories that have droids. So I write some books in the Star Wars Jedi Academy books, and there are droids. There are protocol droids, there are astromech droids. So very similar to R2-D2 and C-3PO from the movies, but of a different, uh, different, different uh, versions of them. Hello. And again, I'll have that lightning bolt. Beep. Boop. Again, I'll have that lightning bolt. Now, what if I have two characters that are saying the same thing at the same time? If I have two characters saying the exact same thing at the exact same time, I would have one word balloon and two stems. If I have a character that has a lot to say, I can break up that large amount of text into word balloons like so, and attach them like this. Now also notice what I've been doing all along. I write the words first, and then I draw the word balloons. That's the best advice I can give you when it comes to making comics. So. We've learned about body language, we've learned about showing emotions, we've learned about how to use these different word balloons. Let's take a moment, talk about something very important here. I'm talking about the pug cam. Oh, who's a snowy pug today? Hey, freaky boy, enjoying the snow? Just a snowy pug here in Western Massachusetts where it's snowing at the end of March because that's crazy. But you're a good boy. Such a good boy. Yes. A good boy, Frank. He's a good boy, there, Frankie. A good boy, there, Frankie. Nom, nom. All right. Well, uh, a new tradition we're having in week two of Draw Every Day with JJK is I invite different author, illustrator, cartoonist, graphic novelist pals to come on and show us how they draw their characters. Today, we have uh, da, 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 Mr. Gene Yang. Now, Gene is a New York Times bestseller. He has twice been a finalist for the National Book Awards. He has tons of graphic novels uh, like Boxers and Saints, which are, it's just a stunning, sweeping, epic tale told in two uh, com um, companion piece books. And he had a new book published just recently called Dragon Hoops. Let me tell you a little bit about Dragon Hoops. This follows a year. And first of all, look at that cover. This jacket was made to look and feel like a basketball. Now, this is a, a long story. Look at Gene likes long stories, clearly. And Gene was a high school teacher. And like me, he grew up loving to draw and read comics and not play sports. And he followed the high school basketball team for a year. So Dragon Hoops is about the Bishop O'Dowd dragons as Gene follows them for the year with uh, Coach Lou, uh, Lou, this coach, this character, who's a real person. So this is a real story, is a, a great character in the book and clearly a great person in real life. He played for this team when he was a teenager and then he, now he coaches them. And not only is this tell the story about this one high school basketball team. It also tells us the history of basketball. Going back to how it began in, in Springfield, Massachusetts, just down the street from where I live. And it goes into the how the NBA formed. It goes into 
uh, college basketball. It goes into uh, the first woman to slam dunk. Uh, so it's a page turner as you follow this basketball team and then you learn the whole history of, 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 of basketball. I love the book. I was so into it. Uh, for younger readers, for middle grade readers, Dragon Hoops Q is a, it's a little bit older. I would say, I don't know. I don't I'll have to check the exact age, but probably 12 and up. Uh, Secret Coders, now available in this nifty box set. Uh, Gene Yang, Ed, he created these books with his friend Mike Holmes. Uh, it's all about coding. So it's about kids and computer science. Uh, fantastic books. Now, Gene also, Gene also wrote for Superman for DC Comics. He also wrote comics for The Last Airbender. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to hop on my, my nifty rotary payphone back there and give Gene a call. You still don't believe me, do you? You don't believe that I can't pick up a rotary phone and call my friend via dial-up modem satellite. Pencil, they don't believe me. What? That's ridiculous. I know. Let's do it. Gene Yang! Hey everybody, my name is Gene. Jared, I thought we were gonna play Mustache Brothers. Oh, Where's your uh, mustache? Right. Uh let's see. Uh better? That's better. Don't you feel more handsome with a mustache? Oh, I sure do. Today I'm gonna show you how to draw characters from my book series Secret Coders that I did with my friend Mike Holmes. In these books, there are these weird birds with four eyes that we call binary birds. So here's how you draw. All right, Gene, let's see what you've got for us. I'm going to start by drawing a big square. These binary birds, their bodies are essentially big squares. And then, like I said, they have four eyes. Kind of weird, but that's how they're built. So these are four circles representing its four eyes. I'm going to do... A football shape right in the middle, that'll be the binary bird's mouth, and I'm going to make them smile. Then I'm going to put more circles into the big circles I already have there. These are the binary bird's pupils, so his eyes don't look like zombie eyes. I'll color these pupils in. Then I'll do these weird W shapes on either side. These are the binary bird's wings. Give them two feet, two toes on each foot. And the last piece I need to do is I need to draw a rectangle right on his belly. And there you have it, a binary bird. That was fantastic. And everyone, as a, again, here is a binary bird in Secret Coders. Thanks for joining us, Gene. Thanks for having me, Jared. That was super fun. Keep drawing, everybody. My mustache. Well, that was awesome. Now it is time for Family Draw Time. Constellation Connection! Hi everyone, welcome Zoe back to the show. Hi! And okay, so we had a viewer submit a game, a drawing game that they play at home. So we're calling it Constellation Connection here. And so we want to give a big thank you to Stephanie and Sydney uh, for sharing with us their drawing game and allowing us to share it with all of you. Okay, Zoe, pick your color. Blue. I'm gonna go with green. So, one artist will make a series of dots. The next artist will connect those dots and try to turn it into a picture. So Zoe, would you like to be the daughter first or the drawer first? The daughter. Okay, you be the daughter. Well, you are a daughter. You're my daughter. That's <laughs> such a bad dad joke. My daughter will be the daughter. Dot, dot, daughter. Okay. Daughter, my daughter will be Dad. dotting. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> All right, let's see. 
again. I'm going to say we can hold it any way we want. Oh, I see something. I see something. It is Holly the Christmas tree. <laughs> Hi! Merry Christmas, everybody! Give me some candy canes. Okay. Yum. I like candy canes. All right. Mm -hmm. Now the dad will be the daughter. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Go for it, Zoe. Can like you can turn it any way you want. Them's the rules. That there really are no rules. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, Captain it's Captain Hook. Yeah. Hook. Nice. <laughs> awesome work. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I hope that you all have fun playing Constellation Connections at home again. Thank you to Stephanie and Cindy for, hey, 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 I already have enough uh, facial hair right now made of uh, marker. Um, so grownups, uh, you can submit the work that your young artists make uh, via my website. So grownups can visit studiojjk.com. Uh, and then you can navigate to don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare, and uh, submit uh, work for the end of the video. Video, uh, please, you can also go ahead and tag me on the social media and on the Facebook, and I, we can see them there too. And in the meantime, we're going to go right to the video. Please click like and subscribe and keep drawing. See you soon.